Hi, it's Mark from Top Local Lead Generation. We're here with John Neuenberg of W5 Coaching in Vancouver. How are you doing today, John? Doing great. Thanks for asking, Mark. How about you? Good. So, on this beautiful day, what, uh, why? Why is the last 10% of the sale at least 90% or seem like at least 90% of the effort? You know, um, that's probably tr accurate, Mark. It seems like it's 90% of the effort. Um, this has come up for me with three different clients in the last week who, you know, are professionals and have a professional service. And they, you know, develop and evolve the sale to the point where um, they're very near the end. A decision hasn't yet been taken. And uh, the, the prospect says something like, I want to think about it. And, you know, the uh, service professional, my clients think that, you know, I've done a great job and I've given them all the information I needed. And, um, you know, this is part of the normal process of getting to the end of the sale. And so I'll let the prospect take their time to, to make their decision. It's a trap. Um, and that's because the, our prospects, um, you know, making a decision is a very scary thing to do for many of us. Uh, it eliminates all other possibilities. It commits us to a path of action. And given um, a point where, you, you know, a culmination point where you must make a decision, most people, if given the opportunity, will back off and choose not to. And so I'll think about it really as a, a way to avoid making that difficult call. Um, and so if you don't have that experience as a salesperson, you don't recognize that that's in fact what happened and you let it go. And of course, more often than not, 90% of the time you don't get the sale. And so as a salesperson, we have to help our prospect get to a place where they feel okay with making a decision, whether that's in your favor or not is, you know, open, but um, we have to create the circumstance where the prospect feels compelled to make a decision. Um, and it can be a whole bunch of things. Um, and, you know, in the hands of an unsavory salesperson, these tactics are unsavory. And in the hands of someone who's committed to the prospect's well-being, these same tactics are very much a service, a gift, something we're helping our prospect in coming to a conclusion because all of us need help in making that final decision. And so one of the things that relates to what we're talking about is the best salespeople have a combination of at least two um, characteristics. One is they have great empathy and one is they have great ego. And by great ego, what I mean is that these are people that are competitive, they're driven, they want to get a result. Um, I don't mean the big ego kind of, you know, big head kind of ego. I just mean that someone is very focused on getting results. And the other quality, empathy is that quality of being able to walk another mile in someone else's shoes and understand where they're coming from. And so if you've got lots of empathy, that's the kind of salesman I've been talking about. They feel, you know, they're very much capable of feeling what the other person is feeling and want to uh, be service oriented and want to let that prospect give them the space to do that. And it feels like the right thing to do, but it isn't. The um, ego-driven guy, if or girl, if, um, if without the compensation or balance point of empathy, that's the you know the one the savory unsavory kinds of salespeople that we all you know like to smear the car salesman types, because they don't really care about you. All they really care about is getting a result. So the best salespeople have that combination of ego drive and empathy, and they know how to use them at the right times. So where's all this getting to? you have to structure the sale in such a way that the point of the meeting is to get a decision. And the best time to do that is to start the sales presentation with, with expressly saying that's the goal of our meeting today. If we both can see the value of working together, we're going to pick one of the solutions I've outlined. If one of them makes sense, we're going to get started today. Mr. Prospect, would it be okay if that's how we spent our time together? So that you preposition that that's the point. And so at the end, when the prospect starts, you know, inevitably doing some of their um, avoiding a decision, you get to call them on it. You get to say, hey, at the beginning of this meeting, one of the things that we said that we'd agreed on is that the purpose of today is to come to a decision. Um, and so we help guide them to the decision. 
Sometimes you have to do things in a way that you give people an either or alternative closed sale. Choice A or choice B, which one fits best with what you're thinking. Given, you know, the another possibility is that there's some kind of time constraint. Another possibility is uh, give the, the prospect a uh, bonus if in fact they're willing to go ahead and make a decision today. So all of these are different strategies you can use that give the prospect the feeling in their mind that it's okay to make a decision, it's okay to say yes. And so the uneducated salesperson doesn't recognize that that last 10% is the biggest part of the effort in getting a decision. Um, if you'd like some help in how to do that, I'm be thrilled to give you a bit of consultation on how to structure your sales process so that more often than not you walk away with a decision and I, a decision I hope is in your favor. So that's what I have in mind today, Mark. So for me, just to encapsulate what, what you're talking about as far as empathy and ego drive, the empath empathetic salesperson will make sure that the client is a good fit for the service. The ego drive salesperson, and at the extremes, will make sure that they're getting the sale, whether they're a good, whether the client's a good fit or not. Is that sort of sum it up? Yeah, that's actually a, f a fair way of putting it. So, ego drive without empathy, uh, the only uh, outcome that's interesting to that person is one that serves them, very self-centered kind of outcome. Whereas when it's you know counterbalanced by empathy, that's where you you know, are going to want to make sure that it's the right decision for both parties, that it is a good fit, as you put so aptly. Reminds me of the old Zig Ziglar thing, and here's how I'm going to help you get it. <laughs> <laughs> you got that Mississippi accent down pretty good. <laughs> well, it's, it's perfect, though. I mean, that's, that's the exact example of an empathetic salesperson who's also got the ego drive to make sure he closes the deal. Yeah. So, you know, personally, I'm more empathetic than ego drive. And uh, so when I get to that part of the sale, I know I have to stretch and get to that place that's a little uncomfortable for me and, and helping guide that person to making a choice. So if you're one of those empathetic kind of salespeople, let me ask you to consider that uh, that you go to that place that is at the edge of your comfort zone and get a bit uncomfortable in asking for the sale and while it'll feel uncomfortable to you, uh, to those on the outside, it won't be uncomfortable at all because uh, if we're strong, empathetic people, then we won't go, um, uh, if, there's, if the fear is that you'll go too far on the, con on the ego drive side, chances are that that isn't going to be the case. So get more comfortable at asking for the sale. So if you want some help with your sales process, this man is a genius at helping, <laughs> honestly. My opinion, uh, John at W5coaching.com or check out his website, it's packed with information, W5coaching.com. John's in Vancouver. Thanks, John. My pleasure. Thanks, Mark.